Hello, it's Sean from Billy Goat Wargaming. Um, hopefully this video will be 15 to 20 minutes long. I'm looking to get some a lot shorter content out there as opposed to some of these longer videos I've been doing. Uh, so the majority hopefully will be between, be between 10 and 15 minutes, some shorter, and then maybe the occasional weekly or fortnightly uh, longer paint and chat session. Um, so this is a bit of a hobby update. So I'm just back from a couple of days in Weymouth where I've stayed with Martin at Peter Pig, play testing the new Mexican Revolution rules that uh, are under development with the team down there. It's not a conflict I knew an awful lot about, I have to say, prior to uh, Martin starting this process. Um, but I've been hooked by it. It's, it's a fascinating conflict, 1910 to 1920. It's got uh, colourful characters, it's got large and small battles, lots of political intrigue. Uh, spoiler alert, everybody dies at the end, essentially. Certainly all the colourful characters that you could name. Um, so a few months ago I did purchase just a few samples of the developing, as it was then, Peter Pig range. It's, it's really galloped on over the last few months. Um, and just needs one or two bits finishing off now, but there'll be close to 80 packs of figures and vehicles and guns and all the rest of the paraphernalia that you get in a Peter Pig range. Um, but the few figures I bought, I painted a couple of weeks ago and they're the, the Mexican government army in caps and here they are. So you might call these Federalistas, I suppose. I don't know if that's actually the correct term, but um, it's certainly a term I'm familiar with. And as you can see, they are beautifully sculpted. Um, the, the equipment and uniform did change over the period of the war, so uh, these same troops might be wearing a kepi or a pith helmet or even uh, a cowboy hat, but they're in the flat cap here. So I've got uh, six of them here, so five rifle bases and a command stand. Although there's no standard bearer with that, so I could probably do somebody carrying a flag, I think, uh, because there's some lovely flags that you can get from Mexico. So these were just painted to get sort of a feel for the figures and what uniforms, uh, what the uniforms were like. It's an incredibly colourful period. It really is. Um, lots of diversity, certainly on the rebel side. So. You've got, the, you've got the government side, you've got the rebel side. Um, the government uh, army wasn't that effective actually early on and was plagued by poor supplies and um, poor organisation. Uh, a, a big factor actually of, of the war was the use of railroads. The Mexican government at the turn of the, 19, of the 20th century spent millions of dollars building this infrastructure and it was used to quite some effect by um, the armies to get around the country because outside of the major cities the, the road network was pretty shocking. Um, but a 10 year conflict, large and big battles, uh, colourful characters, political intrigue, what more could you need? <clears throat> so they're the first group. So uh, just to explain in the rules, um, although I haven't got enough here for this unit yet, but um, Units will start off with seven bases of riflemen and an officer figure, so essentially eight bases. So I need two more really to finish this unit off. Um, and then you can buy additions to that, which might be more men. It might be a machine gun that you can attach to it. Um, the, can, you can buy cavalry, uh, field guns. Uh, it's, it's the usual sort of stuff really for any, any conflict. And the interesting thing is a lot of these figures can be used for both sides, really, because they would have um, picked up odd bits of uniform everywhere. Typical Civil War in that uh, um, the, the equipment was very similar on both sides. OK, so uh, the other thing I wanted to show was my haul from Peter Pig. So every time I go down, I, uh, I'll make a purchase. And this was an exceptionally large purchase. I didn't realise how big it had got, actually, until Nigel... Uh, in the workshop came in with the bag so he was casting this up in in workshop one whilst me and martin were playing in workshop two um and uh, he, he stuck it in with this uh load of there we go 
Christmas bag full of miniatures, and this is acro across several ranges. But the main um, main uh, content of this is an army for the first half of the war government army, although of course it can be used for the second half as well, and uh, a few other bits and pieces. So let's just tip them out and show you what we've got. <coughs> so all of these pink packs are um, the government troops. So there we've got, these are uh, similar to some of these figures here. So it's range 11, pack 11. Um, these are the guys in uh, caps. Uh, packs, uh, pack 11 again. Uh, pack 6 here. I think these might be something like NCOs or something. Uh, certainly officers of some... Oh no, they, these are gun crew. Sorry. These are gun crew in caps. So we've got a couple of seated guys. Guys with shells. Guys with put, uh, who are pointing. I always think in artillery crews in any range that figures like this are great for dioramas or just adding to uh, command bases or vignettes or, or things like that because uh, they're just sort of pointing, got their arms in the air or whatever, uh, no weapon, but great for those sort of character pieces. Um, here we've got some cavalry, uh, which are, who are pack 17. The thing about these are the castings are just superb. There's very little... Uh, flash on any of these very little cleanup required peter pig now do their cavalry as one piece castings so other than there's a little bit there that you can see just on the main but and usually there'll be a little nubbing as i call it on the bottom of the figure there on the base that you need to get rid of but other than that there we go let's just try Zoom in slightly, that generally helps with the uh, focusing. Look how crisp the detail is on that. And the research that Martin has gone into to develop this range is just incredible. It really is. There's another, that's pack 10, so that's either advancing or at high port, can't quite remember, but it's similar troop type. Okay, these are interesting. Uh, these are artillery crew in pith helmets. So that was a, a very common piece of headwear during the war. It's a sun hat, really, essentially. You see this uh, across history in, in hotter climes, this type of helmet. This guy's nice, isn't he? So you can just separate him out for you. He's holding on to his... hat. Gosh, I'm making hard work at this. I do apologise. Let's get rid of that guy. There we go. So this guy, look at him. Holding on to his hat and pointing. And again, that will, that will fit in any unit or command stand or as a vignette or something similar. It doesn't have to be an artillery crew member, but they're, they're really nice. Let's just set, sort out these um, pink cardboard backed packs first because these are all the. Uh, this, this is enough for a whole army of the um, northern contingent of the uh, government army. So, okay, let's see. So, yes, here's one I wanted to show you. So this is the Dodge car, or the Dodge Tourer. That was very much in use. And you'll see in the pack there, let's, let's open it actually. It's, uh, you're getting quite a lot of glare off the light. So we're already 10 minutes in. I'm probably not going to get through this. Having said I want to do it in 10 minutes. So it's a resin piece. So the bit's filled in underneath the vehicle, we'll just paint that black, it's absolutely fine. And this is a, a war games piece, you know, it's not not a railway, model railway piece that you would put on a, on a diorama, although you could do, it's perfectly fine for that. Uh, but it's sturdy, that's the point, there's, there's no moving parts. Um, so you'll see... 
there's four occupants of the car who are headless at the moment and there are heads in the pack but so you'll have the driver and an aide and then the general and maybe a staff officer in the back there but that will um, go on my general's base uh, to get him around the battlefield and you see the um, the other bits and pieces here so you've got the heads on the spigot and what's that other metal piece there is that a door or it might be a door or a, a sun shield or something like that so um more of the cavalry here so he's a he's a nice guy isn't he charging forward with his um sword outstretched now these were really mounted infantry though they, they weren't trained quality cavalry by any stretch of the imagination so um in the game you're really using them to either get around the battlefield really quickly to where you want them to be and then get off and fight dismounted or if you could by chance catch uh, another unit in the open uh, then you might be able to ride them down but um, you will get shot off your horse because we're talking about um, troops carrying breech loaders uh, breech loading rifles you know it's really sort of first world war era uh, technology so pack three here is a command pack and we do have the standard bearers there so that sort of lovely Mexico trickler will go on those. Uh, I think these are, this is an example of the troops in Kepi. That's another uh, hat base. Uh, that is uh, another command base. So I'll just uh, scroll through these. Uh, I can't quite remember. Oh, these are um, so the later government army in um, so cowboy style hats, I suppose. This is command armed with pistols. Um, machine guns were very much a part of this war. Um, somebody better qualified than me will be able to tell you what kind of machine that is. Maybe a Hotchkiss, something like that. But that's a machine gun crew in uh, Kepi. Or cafe, however you wish to, uh, however you choose to refer to it. And um, these are lovely figures. Just let's get one of these out. So this is a infantryman in pith helmet. Just look at the detail. There's no flash. Again, other than. In fact, there's nothing on the bottom there, but at the very most, and all I normally have to do is file the bottom of the base to get rid of what I call the nubbin on the back. And the research, as I was saying earlier, that Martin's gone into, so the knife on the back of that, Martin has got numerous, of the back of this figure, Martin's got numerous pictures what kind of knife this was, what size it was, how it looked, and also the uh, ammunition pouches there, the slung across his shoulders. Martin goes into incredible de detail of his research to make sure that the equipment is absolutely spot on. The amount of books he buys um, for these periods um the uh the research that i'll do on the internet it's just phenomenal so this is the so there's an example here's an example sorry of the amount of flash that you'll get and that's just really remove a very short knife or what i do is use a um a file and just file it off but these are the uh sort of later war trips now this, um, I think this is the example now, I may be wrong in this, but here we go. So this is an example of the research. So this pouch that this guy has got on his side is the ammunition pouch. And when you unstrap it, it sort of rolls down and it's got, I think, 12 cartridges or um, clips to go into, into the breech loading rifle there. 
Um, I'm Martin's researched that pouch endlessly to make sure that he's got the right look for it, and that's the dedication that uh, Martin has uh, for these figures. Uh, so oh, we've got a bit more cavalry, a bit more infantry. What else we got? Cavalry. Uh, one thing I haven't done yet is actually buy the guns. I need um, just a couple of artillery pieces. Uh, to finish these off, I've got some kneeling firing guys to add some variety. Uh, more guys in cap, hat, and uh, hat. So they are, um, that is the figures for, it's probably more than I need actually for uh, the government army of the, uh, the Mexican Revolution. There we go, let's just go back. Okay, what I'll do, I think, is split these uh, vi videos down into uh, two or three different videos just to show you this haul and, and the hobby update because I don't want this going over 20 minutes and I can't get through this lot in the last four minutes of this video. So thanks for watching. That's been the, um, in fact, ooh, there's a rogue one here. And this is uh, pack number one. And I really like these figures. Having seen them in the flesh for the first time this weekend, uh, sorry, the last couple of days, I wish I'd brought a few more of these um, troops in their cappy. But uh, anyway, so that's the end of that. I'm, I'll, I'll switch the video off, end this one here. So this has been the review of uh, Peter Pig's Mexican Revolution Figures Government Army. Uh, and there'll be more to come once I buy uh, the Rebels to go with them. But I'm going to paint the government up first before I move on to the Rebels. Be sensible. Uh, and then there's going to be more to come as I take a look at all this goodness here. Speak to you soon.